Hey everyone and welcome. Today we're tackling a hard problem called maximize the number of partitions after operations. It sounds complicated, but we'll break it down step by step. The goal is to make sense of the logic so you can solve problems like this with confidence. Let's get started. So here's the deal. We're given a string, let's call it fear, and a number, k. We have two phases. First, we get one chance, just one, to change any single character in the string to any other lowercase letter, or we can choose not to change anything at all. After we've made our single change, or decided not to, we start a partitioning process. We look at the string and find the longest possible chunk from the beginning that has k or fewer unique characters. We slice that chunk off and call it one partition. Then we do the exact same thing with the remaining part of the string, and so on, until nothing's left. Our job is to make that one initial change so cleverly that we end up with the absolute maximum number of partitions. Let's walk through the example. Our string is akka, and k is 2. First let's see what happens if we don't change anything. We start with akka. The longest prefix, with at most two distinct characters, is a, c. That's our first partition. We're left with c, c, a. From here, the longest prefix is c, c, which has only one distinct character. That's partition 2. We're left with a, tutoring core, which becomes our third partition. So with no changes we get three partitions. Now what if we make a change? The problem says an optimal move is changing the character at index 2 to b. Our string becomes a, c, b, c, a. Let's partition this new string. The first partition is still a, c. We're left with b, c, a. Now the longest prefix is b, c, which has two unique characters. That's our second partition. Finally, we're left with a cellar, our third partition. In this case we also get three partitions. The trick is that some other change might result in fewer partitions, and we want to find the best possible outcome. The first idea might be to just try everything. We could go through every position in the string, try changing it to every other letter of the alphabet, and for each of those new strings we'd count the partitions. But this approach is way too slow, it would be roughly n squared and that's not going to work, we need to find a more efficient strategy. Here's the key aha moment. When we change a character at some position, let's call it index i. This change doesn't affect the partitions that came before it. Those are already locked in. The same goes for the partitions far after it. The change really only impacts the partition that the character at index i belongs to. And maybe, just maybe, it could cause it to merge with its neighbors. This lets us think about the problem in three parts. Everything before the change, the part with the change, and everything after. Since the parts before and after our change don't, well, change, we can pre-calculate their properties. We'll create two arrays. The first, let's call it left, will tell us, for any position, how many partitions exist in the string up to that point. The second array, right, will do the same but for the end of the string, working backwards. This way, we don't have to recalculate these stable parts over and over again. To keep track of which unique characters are in a partition, we can use a clever trick called a bitmask. Think of it as a set of 26 light switches, one for each letter. If A is in our partition, we flip the first switch on. If C is there, we flip the third switch on. This gives us a single number that represents the entire set of characters. Counting unique characters is just counting how many switches are on. And merging two sets of characters is as simple as a bitwise OR operation, which is incredibly fast. Okay, so now we have all the pieces. We'll loop through every position I in the string, pretending to change it to every possible character from A to Z, for each pretend change, we look up our pre-calculated values. We take the last character set from the prefix, the character set from the suffix, and our new character. We merge them together using our bitmask trick. Then we ask the crucial question, is the total number of unique characters in this merged chunk less than or equal to k? If yes, they combine into a single partition. And our total partition count is the left part plus the right part, minus one because of the merge. If no, they stay separate, and the total is the left part plus the right part, plus 1, for our new character in the middle. We do this for every possibility, and keep track of the highest score we see. Here's the complete Python code for this approach. It might look a bit dense at first, but it's just implementing the logic we just discussed. Let's break it down into smaller, more digestible pieces. First we build our left array. We iterate through the string from the beginning. We maintain a running count of partitions, and a bit mask for the current partition. For each character, we check if adding it would exceed k distinct characters. If it does, we increment our partition count and start a fresh mask with just this new character. Otherwise, we just add the character to the current mask. 
At each step we store the current partition count and mask in our left array. Next we do the exact same thing but for the right array. The only difference is that we loop backwards, from the end of the string to the beginning. This gives us the partitioning information for every possible suffix of the string. Finally, the main logic. We initialize our result with the no change case, which is just the total partition count stored in write at index 0. Then, we start our nested loops. The outer loop picks the position i to change, and the inner loop picks the new character j. We fetch the pre-calculated counts and masks from our left and right arrays. We perform the merge check we discussed, and update our result if we found a better way to partition the string. After checking all possibilities, res will hold the maximum possible number of partitions. So what's the performance of this solution? The time complexity is big O of m times n, where n is the length of our string, and m is the number of characters in the alphabet, which is a constant 26. This comes from the main loop that checks every position and every possible character change. For space we use two arrays that are proportional to the length of the string, so the space complexity is big O of n. This is a huge improvement over the n squared brute force approach. All right, as promised, here is the full solution in Java. You can pause the video here to take a closer look at the implementation. Next up here is the C++ version of the solution. Notice the use of underscore underscore built-in underscore pop count for efficiently counting bits. Again, feel free to pause and review the code. And finally here is the solution in JavaScript. Hopefully seeing it in a few different languages helps solidify the concepts. So let's wrap it up. The big lesson here is to look for ways to avoid redoing work. The brute force solution was slow because it recalculated everything from scratch for every single change. By realizing that a change at one spot has a limited impact, we could pre-calculate the unchanging parts. This prefix and suffix pattern is super useful in many string problems. And finally, using a tool like bitmasks made our character set operations really really fast. If you enjoyed this problem and want to keep practicing, the learning doesn't have to stop here. I've organized all my video solutions into handy playlists. Whether you're looking to grind through more leak code easy, medium or hard problems, or you want to master a specific topic like sliding window or dynamic programming, I've got a playlist for you. It's the perfect way to focus your study sessions. Go to the playlist tab and find a playlist that fits your goals. Also, if you're looking for even more Leak Code problems beyond the daily challenge, I've started a second channel called Leak Code Unlocked. It's where I'll be posting solutions to a ton of other problems, so if you're serious about your interview prep, be sure to check it out. The link is in the description below. Hope this Leak Code solution breakdown made sense. If it helped, give that like button a click, maybe subscribe for more, or drop a comment if you have questions. Make sure to turn on the notification bell so you know straight away when I upload a video, because I upload videos daily. This channel doesn't make any money from sponsorships or ads yet, so if you're feeling generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep coding, and I'll catch you in the next one.